When writing code, one of the common problems that we'll face is repeating lines of code. So once I write a line of code, sometimes there's a reason for repeating that line of code. Depending on the purpose and the reason is going to be what drives which type of loop I pick. While loops I'm going to use when I don't know how many times I want to repeat that line of code. A good example of that is anytime I'm interfacing with my user. So here I have two different user inputs. The first one I'm asking how many cups of coffee someone drinks in a day. Now, if I run my code right now, my user could put in a negative number if they want to, and for this one, they could put any type of text. So when I ask someone how many cups of coffee they drink in the day, ideally, they're gonna give me a positive whole number, and hopefully it's gonna be a realistic number. If I wanna make sure that my code only accepts these positive whole numbers, I have to have some type of system in place to stop my user. So with the error checking or validating user input or user stopping, I use a while loop because I don't know how many times or if at all, my user is going to give me bad data. So getting started on the while loop, I know I have to have while for my while loop and I'm going to end that loop eventually. So there's a few different parts with a while loop. One, I need to identify what's my control variable. So what's the variable that I'm looking at, I'm evaluating, and that I want to control the condition of why I would enter the loop and why I would continue the loop. In this case, it's cups. So as long as cups is less than zero would be one instance, so that would catch negative values, then I want to go ahead and enter this while loop. The purpose of the while loop is going to be partly to tell my user that they need to try again, like I'm not happy with their input. Um, and another part of it would be re-asking them how many cups of coffee they drink in a day. I might want to give them more information about why I didn't like their user input. Um, what was wrong with it? Was it negative? Was it a decimal? Why am I asking for a new input? So a very common error that I see a lot is someone just tells the user try again or tells them that they're wrong. If you think about this in the context of a conversation, what's actually happening, I would ask my user, so how many cups of coffee do you drink in a day? And if they tell me a negative number or something that I don't like, then I would get to this point and I would say, okay, in this case, if it was negative, because I'm only checking negative so far, um, then I would say it's negative, that's true enter the while loop. And here I would just say, try again, try again, try again, try again, try again, infinitely. So I would be stuck in an infinite loop. The reason is in this case, I'm initiating cups. I'm giving cups a starting value. I'm checking cups for a condition, but I don't update it. So it's very important that I have an update inside of my while loop. And in this case, I'm just gonna copy and paste and use the same thing. So if I go ahead and run my code now, if I give a negative number, it says try again. <clears throat> so as long as I keep putting any negative number, it will keep telling me try again. I can put the number zero. So zero is okay, it continues on. Another thing I said I wanted to catch for, look for was make sure my user gave me a whole number. There's a lot of different ways to approach this. You can use rounding functions, mod functions, and there's some other functions in MATLAB that can help. I will just use the round approach here. So if I think about a decimal, if I have like 2.2, .2, if I round any decimal, it's gonna change it to a whole number. So as long as the rounded version of cups is not equal to the original value of cups, then I know I have a decimal. So here you'll notice I put or. The reason is as long as it's less than zero or not a whole number, then it's a bad value. If I put and, this would only catch if I have a negative decimal because both conditions are true. If it's negative, it's okay. And that's not what I want. I want to say either or. So when this is true, when this statement or condition is true, or this condition is true, it's a bad value and I wanna ask the user again. Here I said I also want less than 157. So as long as the value is greater than 
157, I'm going to say that's also a bad value. So I can keep adding more conditions. There's another function that can kind of help catch another error that won't be caught here. So I'm going to show you another thing that could happen. Um, my user could just hit enter. So if the user just hits enter, we can look in the workspace. Cups is equal to nothing, empty brackets, and null. So it's considered an empty value. If I want to make sure my user doesn't just try to bypass the question by hitting enter, causing this kind of red error, I would check to see if that value is empty. So if my user inputs nothing, or it's negative, or it's not a whole number, or it's greater than 157, I'm going to stop my user and say, no, you have to try again. Again, in your code, you might want to communicate with your user. Like, why is their data bad? Why are you asking them that again? And make sure they understand the parameters. Here, I'm going to leave it alone, though. So run it. So again, if I put a decimal, any type of decimal, it catches it. Any negative number catches it. Um, nothing catches it. And any number greater than 157 catches it. My user has to be within my specified range and meeting all of those conditions. So that would be my first instance of a while loop. And this is just for numeric data. So let's do a similar approach for something with strings. So here I'm asking if the user likes coffee. Ideally, I would like my user to say yes or no. Sometimes you might want to add other things in where I'm okay with the user saying yeah or sort of or any other type of way of saying yes, no, not really. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to allow my user to say yes or no. And this is another instance. I might want to be clear with my user when I ask them again, do you like coffee? I might want to say yes or no, do you like coffee? Otherwise, they could be sitting there forever trying to figure out what it is that they have to input. And eventually, realistically, someone's not going to keep interacting with your code if they keep getting stopped and they don't know how to proceed forward. So again, I have a while loop. My while loop has a condition. Um, to get started, let's just do one condition. So as long as the user doesn't say yes. So. I'm only going to allow my user to proceed forward when they say yes. And then we'll move on to the next condition from there. So again, I'm going to ask that same question. I might want to say something. Yes. No. I'm just putting, telling them yes or no here. One cool thing in MATLAB is you can actually do these break section things. This is fun for troubleshooting or running a code multiple times if you don't want to run all of your code. Um, I just want to run this section. So I put two little percent signs. I saw the screen went yellow over here. Now it's yellow over here. Yellow is the active area. So I'm going to go ahead and say run section instead of run to run the code. So when I run the section, it says, do you like coffee? And again, I said, I haven't set it up to work for no yet. The only thing I'm accepting is yes. So I know that it works. So again, remember, running your code often helps you understand and troubleshoot each little component. So I know I've set the correct condition to allow my user to say yes. Now I also want the user to be able to say no. So here's a place a lot of people get confused with those Boolean operators. So in the previous example, we had all or for our Boolean operators because if any one statement was true, it was bad data. In this case, either statement being true doesn't mean that it's bad data. If I say yes, it can't be no at the same time. So when this one is false, meaning I said yes, this one is still true. Oops, well, well, it says yes, it's not true, but now it's true. So I want 
this one to be true and this one to be true in order for it to be bad, which means I need to find the end. So again, if I were to say no, this statement right here would be true because no doesn't equal yes. This statement right here would be false, which would mean overall this condition would be false. So when it got to the while loop, it would say, is this true? And it would say false, just skip right down to the end. So it's not gonna run any of the code in the while loop. Now, if I say, hello, it's gonna say, this is true, hello does not equal yes. This is true, hello does not equal no. Overall is true because both are true. So since it is true, enter the while loop and then go ahead and state more information. So running this section, I'm gonna go ahead and try that out. Hello. So again, it was true and true, overall true. So I entered the while loop. Now, the only way for me to get out of this while loop is to do something that's gonna cause a false, which would be no or yes. No, then it continued on, finished the code. And if I just from the beginning give good data, it doesn't enter that while loop. So again, this is why I would use a while loop with my user. I don't know if my user is going to give me good or bad data to get started. I don't know what they're going to say. So I want to respond based upon what they do. So I can set conditions to respond to my user, respond to a situation. And if you check out one of my other videos, I'll talk about convergence where I'm responding to data. But in this case, I'm just talking about responding to, to my user.